Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. I am Lily, aka Lily Koi, and I make videos about topics to do with health, from the basics to the more advanced, diet, lifestyle, nutrition, emotional health, self-care, self-love, a lot gets covered. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding the little bell so that you will stay up to date with my videos. If you guys watched my last video, you know I've spent some time recently thinking about people who make um, dubious dietary claims. One of which was that drinking soda or eating large amounts of refined sugar is something that is good for you. A counter argument that was brought up, you know, in that argument is that sugars, refined sugars, contribute to the formation of AGEs. If you've never heard of AGEs before, you are definitely not alone. If you think you don't care about AGEs, you're definitely not alone either. They contribute to heart disease. So? Alzheimer's too. Increased inflammation. <laughs> and can contribute to the progression of kidney disease. I really don't give a fuck. They also make you look old. What? Yeah, so when I finally heard that, I was like, oh my god, I need to take care of this. This could be a huge problem in my body and I don't even know. So, I did what any intelligent person would do in that situation, and I googled it. And the vast majority of the information pertaining to nutrition, healthy diet, and AGEs was on paleo websites. One of the top rated hits was from Lauren Cordain, PhD's website, you know, thepaleodiet.com. So basically you're saying that all foods that turn into blood sugar are bad. But isn't that all food? Like, isn't that all, all food? Shh, or we'll miss it when he says ketones. So I read his article, and after I read his article, I was like, oh shit, I've made a huge mistake being a vegan. All I eat is carbohydrates that turn into blood sugar. I'm gonna look like Robert Redford before I know it. Luckily, though, I have learned not to take articles on the paleo diet at face value. In fact, it is smarter to go to the source and, first of all, look at their citations and see if they have even interpreted them correctly, and to look for more information because it can be the tendency of certain individuals and groups to really cherry pick information and where information that's reported is just like grossly inaccurate, sometimes to the point of being being in complete opposition to what the actual science finds. And that is the case with all of these paleo articles talking about AGEs and how it proves the point that carbohydrates are terrible. So it is definitely true, AGEs are bad news but they're not totally avoidable because they're just part of our natural metabolic processes. And luckily, because it's just part of life, we have evolved ways to effectively deal with them if we're eating a species appropriate diet, which I will get into very shortly. So AGEs or advanced glycation end products, just so we have a good basic understanding. They are proteins or lipids that have been exposed to a sugar molecule. And in that exposure, what can happen is that they can bind to each other in such a way that it renders the protein or lipid not really functional anymore. At this point, it's an AGE, and it has to be scavenged and eliminated from the body. That's done through the kidneys. AGEs are considered to be pathogenic compounds in that they cause and contribute to disease. Some of the diseases that they are most associated with were mentioned just a moment ago, and those include heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, kidney disease, and overall inflammation and aging. Okay? Good. And very simplistically, AGEs can be broken down into like two categories. There are the endogenous AGEs, the AGEs that are produced within our own body when we are, you know, doing metabolism. And then there are dietary AGEs, which are in the foods that we eat, and those are taken into our body and contribute to the overall AGE load. We will start by talking about dietary AGEs which are found in most foods. And I just wanna reiterate that the AGEs that you eat end up in your body. They contribute to the load of total AGEs in your body and they contribute to disease process. So as we can see from this 
scientifically based article. It says that dietary advanced glycation end products, or DAGEs, are known to contribute to increased oxidant stress and inflammation, which are likely linked to epidemics of disease. It also goes on to say that animal derived foods that are high in fat and protein are generally AGE rich and prone to new AGE formation during cooking. In contrast, carbohydrate rich foods such as vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and milk contain relatively few AGEs even after cooking. It also goes on to reiterate that the formation of AGEs is a normal part of metabolism, but if excessively high levels of AGEs are reached in tissues and the circulation, they can become pathogenic by causing oxidative stress and binding with cell surface receptors or cross-linking with body proteins, which alters the structure and function. We talked about that briefly. It goes on to say that AGEs are naturally present in uncooked animal-derived foods and cooking results in the formation of new AGEs within these foods, and that these AGE-rich foods do contribute significantly to the body's AGE pool. Low dietary AGE intake has also been shown to lengthen lifespan to the same extent as does energy restriction in mice. So it sounds like it's a really important part of our healthy lifestyles. It goes on to say that it's noteworthy that even lean red meats and poultry contain high levels of dietary AGEs when cooked under dry heat. It also notes that high fat spreads, including butter, cream cheese, margarine, and mayonnaise were among the foods highest in dietary AGEs, followed by oils and nuts, which is very important for us vegans. In comparison to the meat and fat groups, the carbohydrate group generally contained lower amounts of AGEs, and that may be due to the higher water content or higher level of antioxidants and vitamins in those plant foods, both of which reduce new AGE formation in your body. Furthermore, in this category of carbohydrate-rich plant foods, most polysaccharides consist of non-reducing sugars, meaning that they are less likely to create new AGEs in your body. But the AGE amount does go up with the more processed foods that contain high fat foods or animal foods. This report indicates that grains, legumes, breads, vegetables, fruit, and milk, even though milk has its own problems, were among the lowest in terms of dietary AGE, unless they were prepared with added fats. Which really makes me question where Lauren Cordain's article on dietary AGEs came up with the idea that a paleo, meat-based diet, is healthy. If we go to that article, we can see that Dr. Cordain included a table in his article listing the AGE amounts in, in foods that we eat. You can see that he lists all of the paleo foods, but conveniently leaves out all of the very low dietary AGE foods, like grains and legumes. And then, in an effort to, I think it was literally just an effort to make me angry, he goes on to say, Notice that fruits and veggies, staples of the paleo diet, are exceedingly low in AGEs. <laughs> I've been hearing you rag on fruit for so long. If we go back to the other article, we can learn a little bit more about reducing AGE content in our food by using lower heat, wet methods of cooking. So that would be like boiling and steaming instead of frying or broiling. That article also comes with a really helpful table, which is linked below. You can click on that and get yourself a copy of this little table that lists in quite good detail the dietary AGE amounts of many, many, many foods. If we look at that, we can see that foods that are high in fat, like nuts and seeds, are pretty darn high in AGEs, but you see that if you look at butter, it's even higher. Now, the bigger numbers on the left-hand side, keep in mind that that is a per 100 gram size. The numbers that are all the way to the right-hand side, those are the per serving amounts for dietary AGEs. So with a lot of these foods, you wouldn't necessarily be eating a 100 gram portion. But as we go through these foods, you can see that the high fat processed foods are very high in dietary AGEs. You can also see that peanuts are pretty darn high. Not impressed peanuts. Pine nuts. Jeez, I'm glad I can't afford those. 
As we keep on going down to the liquid fat portion, you can see that oils are very high in AGEs, even if you break it down to a per serving amount. So I'm feeling pretty good about my decision not to include added oils in my diet right now. We make it down into the meat and meat substitute area, and you can see that across the board, meat is pretty darn high in dietary AGEs. And you see that because the serving sizes of meats are so big, they do tend to stay pretty close to the per 100 gram amount. And I can just imagine that the average person who's eating meat two or three times a day is taking in a lot of dietary AGEs just from this source alone. See that barbecued chicken is just astronomical. But then we come down to the piece de resistance, bacon. My God, bacon. I feel like a screenshot of that would be a great response to the bacon though. Coming down across the board, meat is pretty gosh darn high. But then we come down to the meat substitute area. Looking at some soy burgers, pretty impressive. Um, I'll probably be avoiding the bacon bits and the meatless jerky, except for the occasional treat. And I am now questioning my love of broiled tofu. I might have to stick to raw tofu from now on. We'll see, you know, for treats and come down to the carbohydrate section. And I have to just interject that with all of the hype that I was hearing about like, oh sugar and foods that turn to sugars are so bad, oh my god, they're so bad for you, with the AGEs. I was expecting to have like astronomically high amounts of dietary AGEs in these foods. But I'm actually really impressed to see that the AGE load, dietary AGE load, of a lot of these foods is pretty low unless there's added fats or oils or animal foods into the product. Like, this is not bad at all. And coming down to look at the grains and legumes, I understand why Dr. Cordain left those out of his chart now because it is so obvious how much better these foods are for you than eating lots of meat. I mean, these are astronomically low levels of dietary AGs. Even we come down to potatoes, like french fries. Not, not that bad. <laughs> but if you look at a boiled white potato, that's, that's basically nothing. Coming into the more processed foods, you start to see higher numbers because, you know, we got the oils and the animal foods that are added to those for palatability and such. But you can see that if you stick to whole plant foods, you can pretty easily avoid a lot of these high dietary AGE foods. As we're looking at fruits, you have like, you know, coconuts higher in fat. I'm a little bit surprised about the dried fig, I have to say. I don't know if that's like a brand specific thing, but I would be curious about that. And then you look at the vegetables, which are clearly in a fantastic range. And the fruits and the vegetables are the group that were so praised by the paleo aficionado, Dr. Cordain. And yet the numbers of the vegetables and the fruits are on par with the grains and the legumes. But that is just like, let's just, let's just not mention that. <laughs> now, interestingly, you can see that the white sugar actually has zero dietary AGEs. And that was something that I really didn't expect either. I expected it to be quite high, but that little fact about white sugar will segue us nicely into the endogenous AGE portion of this video. As I mentioned earlier, the endogenous AGEs are the ones that are produced inside your own body when there are proteins and fats exposed to sugars. That is why high blood sugar has been so associated with increased amounts of AGEs as well as AGE-induced damage to your vascular tissues to your arteries. And the longer that your blood sugar is high, the more damage and inflammation and arterial stiffening can occur. So that is a big reason why it's important to have healthy levels of blood sugar and healthy insulin sensitivity. I'm not gonna get too much into the details of insulin health and insulin sensitivity right now. If you have more questions or wanna explore that topic, Dr. Greger has made some phenomenal videos about it. I will link those down below. And do pick up a copy of Neil Bernard's book about type two diabetes. He breaks it down very, very, very well in a very easy to understand 
understand way. So basically, when it comes to endogenous AGEs, it is so important to have a fast and unimpeded path for the sugar to get from your digestive system into your bloodstream and into your cells where it belongs as quickly as possible. That's where healthy insulin function comes in. Another factor that has proven to be extremely important in endogenous AGE production is the antioxidant content of your diet. Now, your body can produce antioxidants itself. Your genetics control how much antioxidant power your body is able to generate, and that is an epigenetic factor, so your lifestyle is influencing that. But again, that's like the subject of a whole other video. But dietary antioxidants are absolutely vital for our health as well. So study after study after study about endogenous AGEs have found that in the presence of antioxidants, AGE formation is essentially arrested. That is huge, and I don't think we should just gloss over that fact. Which brings us to the solution portion of this video. What should you do? How can you reduce your AGE exposure from your diet and the AGEs that your body is producing? You should eat whole plant foods. I know, you're shocked. Whole plant foods are naturally low in dietary AGEs. As you saw from the chart, they are some of the lowest foods possible unless you want to live on vodka, which won't go well. Whole plant foods are also tremendously high in antioxidants and other protective plant compounds, as mentioned a minute ago. And a lot of whole plant foods are also rich in another protective compound, alpha-lipoic acid. That can be found in large amounts in foods like spinach and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and peas and tomatoes and rice brands and all kinds of places. You just really can't go wrong with the whole plant foods. They're high in the vitamin C and the B1 and the B6 and the frickin' selenium and other antioxidant minerals. And I think I will enjoy a sip of my antioxidant-infused smoothie. Got hibiscus tea, amla powder, passion fruit, some bananas, and turmeric. All of which contain the antioxidants and other awesome plant compounds like turmeric and resveratrol that have been shown to reduce AGE activity. It's just, it's not even really quantifiable how awesome whole plant foods are for reducing AGE activity in your body. I'm just confused as to why this was brought up as a problem to me. Anyway, I was planning to make this a short video. We can all see how well that went. Thank you though for tuning in, it is highly appreciated. A like would be awesome if you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos. And don't forget to share this video with anyone who you think would find it enlightening and intriguing and who, who wants to geek out like me. Without cocaine, science. All right, you guys, thank you again for watching. Until next time, make better choices for yourself, like consuming low dietary AGE foods and all the antioxidants you can get your little hands on. Shove them in your mouth and take really, really good care of yourselves. I will see you all very soon. Bye.